Okay, so having written our first piece of code in P5.js, albeit not a very exciting one, um, let's finally make some drawings using code. Um, I've got the editor open here and I'm, um, I can see that the template again has been created for us, which is really great. Um, before we draw anything or we add any drawing commands, let's go ahead and run this and talk about what's happening here. Um, so you'll notice when I click the run button that this gray square appears over to the right. Um, and this is, this is actually our sketch. This is our, our program running. Um, and we talked before in the last video about um, commands and arguments, parentheses and um, semicolons, which are all required. But what we didn't really talk about is this function setup and function draw. Um, so the setup up here, and we'll talk about what function means um, later in, in some other examples, but for now we can kind of just ignore that part. Um, setup is a, a bit of code that runs right at the beginning when your sketch first starts. It runs once um, and we use it for things like setting the size of the canvas that we're going to draw to. Later we'll use it for loading images and things like that. Um, and then the draw down here happens after the setup and it runs repeatedly over and over, um, basically as fast as it can. Um, and this is where the majority of our drawing commands are going to go. Later, we'll also be using the draw for things like animation, where we want something to change over time. Um, for the first, uh, I don't know, little while, half or so of this class, we're actually going to be doing only static things. Um, but later, we'll be able to add animation, which will be really great. Um, so then the next thing you'll see here is this create canvas command. Um, this is a part of P5.js. And what this does, like I said, is creates this rectangle over here, our canvas, where we're going to be drawing um, stuff to. And uh, 400, 400, um, these are arguments. So in the last example, console.log, we had one argument. That was the parameter of for that command where we told it what text we wanted to have it display. Here, we're um, defining the width and the height of this canvas. And one of the things I really love about working in code is we can just try changing something and see what happens. So um, it's, if, since the first number is width, let's go ahead and try changing this to 200, 400, and we can run this again. And now we'll see it's skinny and tall. Um, we can shrink this down to be 200. And, oh, and to, to change this, then I'm clicking the run button again. You can either click stop and run or just the run button. So now it's 200 by 200. I can make it 600 by 200. In this case, it's going to run off screen for me. That's OK. Um, I'm going to put this back to 400, 400. Um, oh, you'll also notice that this is separated by a comma. And um, this is really important. So our arguments, we need some way of uh, processing knowing um, what what the you know the separation of those two values are like otherwise it's going to think it's one big number or something like that so we need a comma between those okay so um, before we get into drawing commands and stuff like that I think it's worth talking a little bit about the coordinate system that we're going to be working with um, and because this takes some getting used to I think um, so if we know our canvas is 400 by 400 um, this point up here in the upper left corner is zero, zero. This is our origin point. Um, everything is relative to the upper left corner. And that's common in most computer uh, graphics contexts. Then our x direction is this way. Oops, trying to draw a little arrow here. Um, and then the y direction is up and down. So we can use the numbers that we've defined in Create Canvas to start to figure out some positions on the screen. And this takes some practice to get kind of your brain working in this way. And in fact, this whole week in the, your assignment is all about thinking about coordinate systems and stuff like that. So let's start with this upper right corner over here. If you want to pause for a second and try to guess what that position is, um, you can do that. You, all you need to know is that the canvas is 400 by 400. Um, so this point is, remember, x is first, y is second. And um, we're all the way over. So we know that this is 400 
but we're we're all the way at the top. We're not down at all. So y is zero. If we try the lower right, sorry, the lower left corner. I think I've got my left and right all confused already. Uh, the lower left corner down here um, is not over at all. It's all the way over to the left. So it's zero in the x, but it's all the way down. So it's 400 in the y. And then from there, we can guess what the lower right corner is. Um, this value is going to be all the way over in the x, 400, and all the way down in the y, 400. So this is pretty weird, uh, but from here we can actually do some basic math and figure out other points on the screen. So let's try to guess what the center point is. And again, if you want to pause the video for a second and try to guess, I think that would be a good you know, way for you to start thinking about this. Um, and again, all we need to know is the dimensions of this canvas. So halfway across the screen would be 400 divided by two or 200. And the same for the height because it's a square. So it's halfway down, this is 200. Let's try a couple more points and then we'll apply these to some drawing commands and, and see how that goes. So um, let's maybe do this point up here. So um, this is halfway across the screen. So it's 200, but it's only a quarter of the way down. So you can think of that as 400 uh, divided by four, which would be 100. And then let's make, let's do one more point over here. Now that, you know, my measurement is not exactly in the middle. Let's do that a little more accurately. That's a little better. Um, and so this point would be a quarter of the way over in X. So this would be 100, but it's halfway down. So it's 200. And I promise this seems really confusing and weird, especially to make drawings with. Um, the more you practice it, the easier it gets, the easier it gets to understand it. Um, let's go ahead and try making some drawings. So we're going to come back to the color here in a little bit and change that because color is a whole other thing. Um, but the first and most basic drawing command we can do is the line. And a line has um, four arguments, four parameters that define it. It's got its start x, start y, um, an end x, and an end y. And you can see here I'm using comments as a way of like labeling and keeping track in code. I think that's a really good practice for you to get into. So let's say to start, let's use some of the points we've already defined. If we want to draw a line from say the upper left to the lower right, we can do that by saying line. And then we can use our dimensions from Create Canvas to figure those points out. So our start X would be zero, zero, that's the upper left corner up here. And our end X and Y would be all the way over and all the way down, which would be 400, 400. Don't forget your semicolon at the end, click run, and we should see a line appear across the screen. Um, let's do another line. Let's do it from the other side. So now we can do a line like this. Uh, so, and if you are, coding this along with me, that's awesome. I think that can be a really cool way. You can pause the video and do this. Um, or I should also mention, if you want, you can jump into, um, there'll be a link um, to, let's see. There will be a link to these collection, this collection of code for this week. Um, this is the drawing basics. And this has everything here. So if you just want to kind of like look through it and read it and run it along with us, We can you can do that too. Okay, so a line from the upper right corner to the lower left. This one's a little trickier. We're all the way over in the X, so that's 400, and we're all the way at the top for the Y, so that's zero. So that'll be our point over here. And then the lower left corner would be all the way to the left, so that's zero X, 400 Y. And then we have an X. Cool, so um, awesome, not that exciting, I guess, but um, still more interesting than just printing some text or whatever. Um, let's now pause for a second on the coordinates and talk about color. Um, you'll notice this background command here is defining the background color for our, our canvas here. Um, and color is defined in most computer graphics 
by RGB, which you may have heard of before. This stands for red, green, and blue. Um, now this is what's used for the majority of computer graphics, for screens, for digital cameras, video, that kind of thing. Um, not exclusively, but um, you may have also heard of things like CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black. This is used for inkjet printing, commercial printing, stuff like that. Um, or And there's lots of other ways of representing color. This is not the only way. So HSB, uh, lab, all these other kinds of ways of thinking about color. But we're going to only be dealing with RGB during this class um, because that's really what's standard for computer graphics. And our values for this are going to be all in a range of 0 to 255. So 0 meaning none of that color, and 255 meaning 100% of that color. Um, so what we can try doing, and again, I love this about code, is we can just change some numbers here and see what happens. So for my background color, maybe I do um, 0, 0, 0. So no red, no green, no blue, we get black. Um, similarly, 255, 255, 255. Again, separated with commas, uh, we get white. So 100% of all colors becomes white, 0% of all colors becomes black. Um, we can also just try mixing some colors manually and see what happens. So no red, 50% um, green and full blue. Um, Oh, and I should say, so red, green, and blue are like the primary colors for computer graphics. So you're probably used to from, you know, um, art class in school, thinking of red, yellow, and blue as the colors that let you mix all the colors. In computer graphics, red, green, and blue, because of the way they work, um, mixed to all colors. That's a topic for another day that's super interesting, but we're not going to talk much more about that. Uh, Wikipedia would be a good place to go. Um, so let's go ahead. I kind of like this blue color. We can leave this here. Um, and now let's go down and draw some more shapes. And just like um, the coordinate system, red, green, and blue color with um, numbers gets easier the more you use it. And certainly you don't have to just do it with numbers. You can open Photoshop or um, a web tool to kind of like mix color and um, pick colors yourself. Okay, so there's two ways that we can change color for shapes. The first is fill. This is the interior color. And then stroke, which is the outline. So um, next, we're going to draw uh, an ellipse. So let's go ahead and change our fill color. And um, I don't know. I'm feeling garish. Let's do a nice orange uh, on top of this blue here. And so by saying fill, we're now changing the fill color for any commands that we make next, So and until we change it otherwise. Our ellipse command then um, is like line. Uh, it's requiring coordinates and pixel dimensions and stuff like that. But in this case, it's the center x. It's four numbers as well. Center x, center y, the width, and the height. So I'm going to say ellipse. And in parentheses, um, I want to put it right in the middle. So I'm going to do 200, 200, uh, I don't know, 50. 50. So now I have an orange, in this case it's a circle because the width and the height are the same, 50-50. Um, I can change those values to make them uh, you know, bigger or smaller to make it into an ellipse. So now it's wide, 150 pixels wide, but only 50 pixels across. Um, you could change the, pos the position of this or whatever. So we can leave it like that. And we can try changing the fill color and see how that affects it. So maybe we go something like that or brighter like that. Um, <clears throat> and you'll find all of these drawing commands in the P5.js reference. If you go to help reference right in the editor, you'll find it. So if you've forgotten how something works, this is a great place to go. OK, so ellipse is great. Um, we can also, of course, set the stroke color. We'll do that in a little bit. But for now, um, let's try turning this off. So we can specify a color. But we can also say no fill or no stroke. So no fill will turn off the fill. No stroke turns off the stroke color. Obviously, if we turn off both of them, then we're going to have nothing. 
So what I'm going to do is also use comments to um, remove or put back in code. Um, and this way, I can kind of preserve that here. I'm going to turn off the fill. Our next drawing command is the rectangle. This also has four numbers, but it's a little different than the ellipse. This is the upper left x and upper, I guess, uh, y. And then our width. Just trying to think if there's a better way to describe that. Uh, I think that, that makes sense. So it's kind of the upper corner. It's like the origin for our um, canvas here. And then our width and our height. Um, so let's say we do a rect. And rect is the command for this. It's short because typing rectangle is too long. Um, so let's say we want to do this at 100, 100. Um, and then the width maybe is going to be 300 by 300. So actually, this runs off the screen. That's interesting to see as well. Um, but you, um, this is our corner here that we've defined. And then it's 300 pixels wide. Actually, it's right up to the edge um, over here. But we can try shrinking this, for example, to be 200, 200. Now we have this nice centered rectangle with a black stroke and no fill. If instead we did no stroke, uh, fill and no stroke. Now we see it has no outline. Now obviously it's covering up that um, ellipse that was below it. You'll also notice that the color stays the same. So um, this ellipse is the same color as the rectangle. And that's because the um, we've told P5.js to make this fill color um, here. And then we haven't told it anything otherwise. So it's not going to change until we explicitly tell it what to do. So let's say instead we do a fill of black. Now you'll also notice that our yellow ellipse is gone and that's because the black square is being sort of like drawn, I'm trying to do this in the camera here, uh, drawn on top of that. Um, so we can use that to overlap, block out shapes, stuff like that, but it's in the order that we've given it in processing. If I was to flip these around, then the ellipse would be on top of our um, rectangle. One more thing we're gonna notice. Um, it, this seems like so simple, but actually like all these things have an effect. You might be wondering, where the heck did my lines go? I have these like nice lines going. Well, the reason is that we've said no stroke. And if you remember, draw runs over and over. So the very first time draw runs, you can think of it again, it's a dumb robot. Um, if you think about this, draw draws the background color. It draws these lines that are black by default. It draws the ellipse, it draws the rectangle, but it's turned off the stroke. Then it comes back around here. It draws the background again. Now it goes to draw lines, but the lines uh, stroke has been turned off. And until we turn it back on, it doesn't know that we want to use that. Um, and so then it just kind of continues like that. So I might need, in this case, to put our stroke back. One more thing you can do with color. There's going to be a lot of info. This is a long video. Um, there's a lot of kind of basics to cover here. Um, you may notice that in this case, I've defined the color with just one number. Um, and when you do that, it's grayscale. So it's equivalent. This is the equivalent of um, 0, 0, 0, like that. It's just shorthand. It's easier to write. So if you want to create a grayscale value, that's a good way to do that. Um, let's try running this. And now we have our lines back because we specifically said we want that stroke color. OK, so we've done. Um, lines, circle, or ellipses, which include circles, rectangles, which include squares. Um, there's a couple more basic drawing commands. There's actually quite a few others you can find in the reference. Um, the next is triangle. This one's kind of a pain. Um, this requires six points. Um, that's going to be x1, y1, x2, y2, oops, 2, x3, y3. So this is going to define the three points of our, our triangle. It's going to can be a little tricky. Um, and let's go ahead and change the fill for this as well, because there's one more way that we can change colors um, in, in P5.js. So we've talked about the three values, the RGB, the one value, which is grayscale. But we can have four numbers. And if we do that, um, let's do, I don't know, white. So 255, 255, 255. The third number, or sorry, the fourth number is alpha or transparency. 
transparency. And this defines how opaque or transparent that shape, that color is going to be. So zero would be fully transparent, 255 would be fully opaque, and in this case, 150 is somewhere in between. And we can try changing that in a second and see how that looks. So let's draw a triangle um, and the command for this triangle. And I find triangles to be hard to get my brain around. So what I'm gonna do here is make a little drawing first. Let's change this color so that we can see it. Let's say I wanna draw from this upper point here. This will be one. Maybe my lower point will be down here. That'll be two and then three. Hard to draw with this trackpad here. <laughs> so one, two, and three. Um, and let's go ahead and um, define those points. So our first point up in the top. Again, if you want to pause and try to guess, that'd be great. Um, this will be halfway across. So I know my window is 400 pixels. So this would be 200 and it's at the top. That's zero. Um, then the lower right, that one we've done before, that's going to be 400, 400. And the lower uh, left is we've also done before, that's going to be 0x because it's not, you know, it's all the way to the left and 400 because it's all the way down. And you'll notice how I'm formatting this. This is sort of my preference where I'm clumping x and y values together and then a space between the pairs. Um, the spacing doesn't matter at all. You could put a whole bunch of space or whatever works for you. Um, I just happen to kind of like doing it this way. And so now if we run this, you see our semi-transparent triangle shows up here on the screen. We can change that alpha value to be more transparent. So remember the lower the number, the less and less opaque it is um, all the way up to 200, mostly opaque. So um, lines, ellipses, rectangles, triangles, there are, it's one more kind of shape command that I think you're gonna find really helpful. Um, and that is, let's say we wanna draw something with more than three points. Um, there is a quad command for four points, so you can draw parallelograms and stuff like that. Um, but I don't actually, I think that gets kind of confusing. And past that, let's say you wanna draw a hexagon or some weird random shape. Um, to do that, we use begin shape and end shape. And this lets us then define um, a shape of any amount of points that we want. In fact, we could draw triangles, we could draw whatever. Um, so we say begin shape. And this is a good example of a command with no arguments. So you'll notice the parentheses there, um, which notes that it's a command, but it doesn't take any arguments. We don't put anything in there. And then uh, end shape. And then in between these two, so between begin shape and end shape, we need to list the points. And we do that with this command vertex. And with for vertex, we specify an X and a Y point um, on the screen. So let's say we wanna go from, I'm just gonna type some arbitrary kind of numbers here, 50, 50. So that's just one point. Vertex, let's do 200, 100, vertex, um, 300, 100. Let's just try running this and see. So here, oh, and you also notice so it keeps that same fill color. Let's go ahead and change that to be something that we can see more easily. So here's our shape here. It's kind of funky looking. Um, let's add some more points. Vertex. Uh, and again, really cool. We can just run this and kind of see if you want to make a more specific shape here. Um, I actually really recommend graph paper in, or your sketchbook and kind of mapping it out because it can be very hard to picture this on the screen here. Um, so I really like using that as a tool. Like um, my sketchbook is full of those kind of diagrams. Um, let's say instead, before we looked at no stroke, let's try um, no fill. Oh, and now it's gone because we had turned off the stroke. So let's make the stroke, um, let's make that orange. So it's a little hard to see. Maybe we can brighten this up. That's a little better. Um, so now we can see here's our points like this. 
And you'll notice it doesn't close the shape because my first point is over here. My last point is down at the bottom. Um, and so end shape has an optional argument you can add, which is the word close. And it needs to be in all caps. Uh, but what that does is then draws a line between the last point and the first point. So if I run this, now we see it closes it up. Uh, we can add as many points as we want, but what we want to avoid most of the time, at least, um, is, let's make this a little darker. Um, we want to avoid having these, uh, basically we want to go around in order. It doesn't matter which direction, you know, my points, I want to go kind of like this. What I wouldn't want to do is draw this point. In fact, we can even see what happens. If I draw this point, then this point, then this point, then this point, well, actually we get a different kind of shape, but what you might end up with a lot of the time is like an hourglass or something weird like that, which is not what you're after. You know, maybe we're trying to draw this shape, but you ended up with this. Um, so you want to think about your points going kind of around either clockwise or counterclockwise for this. Um, one other shape parameter we can change, and I think that's it. I know this is a long video. Um, we can change the thickness of our stroke, of our outline, using stroke weight. Now, it's important to note begin shape, stroke weight. You'll notice it's lowercase here, uppercase for the next word or any following words. This is something called camel case, because um, it goes up and down like humps of a camel. Um, and that Capitalization is really important. You'll get an error if you try doing it like this. It won't know what you're talking about. Um, and then stroke weight is also defined in pixels. So the default thickness is one pixel, but we can, for example, do three. And now again, that applies because the draw uh, section loops over and over. Now all of them are this thick. If we wanted to reset that, for example, we could do stroke uh, weight of one. So now you can see that thick outline. I mean, we can make this super, super thick, 30. Uh, and there are some other ways that we can change this. I would definitely recommend looking um, in the reference for these kind of drawing commands and see what's listed. Just like in Illustrator, you can change the stroke cap, the corners, and some of these other things. And there are lots of drawing commands we haven't talked about. So curved kind of shapes. Um, there's a special command just for squares and circles, um, up to really complex stuff like Bezier curves and things like that. So um, definitely take a look at the reference. And I think this example will be a good starting point for you to look at as you're kind of starting to draw shapes, just to like refer back to. So in the next example, we're gonna expand on this idea of the coordinate system, um, but start using it in uh, relation to the width and the height of the screen.